Uh, yes, uh, hello guys. Uh, as a part of uh, you know a lecture series on Network Simulator 2, uh, in this session I'm going to deliver a talk on you know congestion window graph. Uh, mainly, it's called as TCP congestion window. Uh, let me uh, open my screen. Uh, I mean, uh, share my PPT. I think it's visible. Uh, so, uh, TCP congestion uh, mainly uh, deals with you know to avoid the main functionality of TCP protocol is which avoids congestion, which uh, downs the congestion compared to other protocols. Okay, uh, we have two protocols in transport layer. One is TCP and one is UDP. UDP will not perform a congestion operation. It will uh, bother about only error correction and detection and other stuff. Okay, but in case of TCP, it will uh, bother a lot about congestion occurrence in the network. Okay, so uh, as in the network simulator exercise part, I think we saw that question in the previous lecture. Uh, we have here uh, the question talks about creating the Ethernet LAN. Uh, with n nodes and set multiple traffic and plot the congestion window graph for different centers and destination. Correct? No? So, as the uh, uh, problem statement we discuss about, we have to plot the congestion window graph. TCP mainly deals with three phases of TCP congestion. Let me explain how it works. I have a congestion window, or simply we can call it as a window. It's nothing but the size of the capacity of the receiver and sender it's called as congestion window window is nothing but the size okay congestion window is nothing but the tcp window usually called it as congestion window okay so uh, as we all know that in case of tcp protocol if you send one send uh, one you know one data you'll get the acknowledgement right now for each and every data sent you should get an acknowledgement Hence, it is also called as guarantee of service protocol. We are very sure that the data which we are delivering, all the data will be received by the receiver. Okay. So, uh, how we can assure that? By the acknowledgement. If you are not going to receive any acknowledgement, <coughs> that shows, that indicates that the data has been lost in the network. There is the first phase of TCP called as TCP slow start. The first, very first phase of TCP, known as TCP slow start. Okay, how this slow start works? The slow start operation always begins with zero and one. Initially, we have zero data. I mean, to say the condition window, the window will not having any type of packet. One in the first iteration, I have to send the first packet, one packet, and I'll get back the acknowledgement. Okay. In the second iteration, I have to send two packets and I have to get back the acknowledgement for all the two packets. In the third iteration, I have to send four packets and I'll get all the acknowledgement. Okay. In the next in the next iteration, I will not send eight, I'll send 16. Okay. This grow is called as exponential growth. Clear? This growth is called as exponential growth of the data. Okay. So this phase, first phase of TCP operation is called as TCP slow start operation. It will never, send. for example, I have uh, 2000 uh, uh, MB of data I have to transfer. In the first iteration, I'll not send all the data initially. I'll send one data, I'll get back an acknowledgement. I'll send two, I'll get back an acknowledgement. I'll get send four, I'll get back an acknowledgement. I'll send 16, I'll get back an acknowledgement. I'll double of that. 64, <clears throat> I'll send that. I'll get the acknowledgement. Similarly, it follows. Similarly, it follows. Okay. Until unless we'll get the failure of acknowledgement. We'll see that uh, scenario later. This phase is called as slow start phase. This phase is called as slow start phase. Okay. You can see here correspondingly. I can explain you the graph how it works you can check out here uh, we have two lines i think the uh, this graph is visible and i get answer guys is it okay sir uh, so you can check out here we have a green line and also have the red line okay so the somehow the feature of the graph looks almost same right now both the graph feature i mean to say the structure of the graph is almost same. Okay, so 
Now, let me go with how that works in the greater details. Let me assume, let, let us assume, I think in your uh, no, X is also we did in the same way. The X axis always indicates the time and the Y axis always indicates the condition window values. How it usually works, it will go with two, you can uh, check the exponential growth, it will go with two, four, uh, no, uh, two, uh, initially two followed by, it's exponential, completely exponential, okay. After 16, it's completely 32, 32 to 64, I mean to say it's completely exponential, okay. Exponential growth we have. There is uh, this phase from this dot to this dot, it's an exponential. I think you all know the exponential graph, correct, no? Can I get the answer? This graph is called as exponential graph. This part, until this part. Correct, no? Say something. From here onwards, <clears throat> whenever it reaches the threshold value, and that threshold value is called as target value sometimes, Whenever the TCP congestion window value becomes or reaches the target value, in this example, for example, they had taken the congestion window value as 32. So once it reaches the 32 value, or we can call it as uh, congestion window values, it has to go for the second phase. We can call that phase as congestion avoidance phase. And immediately I have to go with linear increment of data. Until that, if I would have sent 64 or uh, the double of that 128 and all, immediately I have to start sending the data in which way? 129, 130, 131, 132. I mean to call that phase is called as condition avoidance phase. We'll get the replay. I mean, this increment is called as linear increment. This increment is called as linear increment. Okay. Hope you got the logic of this. Say something, guys. Hope you got the logic. Are you there, guys? Yes, sir. Okay. So, when we have the you know exponential uh, linear growth of this, you can see the graph in this diagram also. It was exponential. Whenever the it will be, it will reach a threshold value. It's the graph becomes linear. And one important, one more important point. This phase is called as condition. Avoidance phase. The third important phase which I have to explain is, uh, you can check out here. Whenever it reaches the condition, you know, third condition value or condition window value, the graph becomes linear. This is fine. And again, at some point of time, one or the other packet lost in the network or will not receive one acknowledgement. At that time, the congestion window value will be dipped to half of the congestion window value. Okay, it will dip to half of the condition window value. Okay, it was something like 42, immediately it will dip to 24. Okay, something like that. It will dip to almost half of the condition window values. Okay, and again, it will go for the uh, linear uh, you know, graph and it will uh, go for this phase is called as condition avoidance phase. This phase is called as condition avoidance phase. Okay, can, uh, sorry, can, uh, 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 recovery phase. Okay, you can uh, check out here. The initially we have a uh, uh, no slow start phase uh, until that time the complete uh, you know uh, exponential growth was there, and once it reaches the threshold value, it will go for the uh, you know linear increase, and that point is called as conditional avoidance phase. At certain point, some, some packet has been lost in the network. In that category, at that point, whenever the packet has been lost, immediately the packet, uh, the condition window value becomes zero. Okay, the condition window value becomes zero. Once the condition window value becomes zero, for the next iteration, the threshold value will be half of the previous threshold value. Half of the previous threshold value. Okay, you can check out here. The threshold value was something like uh, it was. Uh, congestion window was something like 41 or 42, immediately it will dip to half of it, completely half of it. Okay. So in the next iteration, you can see again it will go for exponential growth. Whenever when, when, what the threshold value now, the half of the previous one. So uh, at this point, again it will go for linear growth. This operation is called as congestion recovery phase. Okay. Immediately the packet will be keep sending and 
for which packet has been lost from there the, the complete data will be resync and this phase is called as condition recovery phase okay how many phases we have slow start phase condition avoidance phase and condition recovery phase now what about slow start phase in the slow start phase the data the packet will be sent exponentially okay once the, the packet size becomes the condition window value okay to the set condition window value it will go for condition avoidance phase in that avoidance phase it will immediately shift from um, you know exponential growth to growth to linear growth okay once the packet has been lost in the network the condition window value becomes zero and for the next iteration the threshold value will be half of the previous condition window value okay and this phase is called as condition recovery phase okay three phases slow start phase condition avoidance phase and condition recovery phase you can see the same thing in this you know graph also okay how it works it will works with you know in increase of complete increase of exponential growth and when it reaches the threshold it will go for linear growth once the packet has been lost immediately the condition window value becomes zero for the next iteration or the condition window value will be previous condition window half of it somehow somehow half of it okay so the next iteration will be again on uh, exponential growth at some iteration the packet will be lost uh, sorry uh, it will it reaches the uh, half of the previous condition window value and again linear growth at some time the packet will be lost immediately it will be dipped to zero okay hope you got the logic of this this is all about you know how the condition window uh, graph can be explained uh, it, it it is not only restricted for only for two users or uh, two senders and two destination we can consider multiple users and multiple destination also okay this is all about here uh, you know uh, the condition window graph corresponding to your uh, program number 3 of your syllabus